Now that you have your animations kind of finished, we want to take all the individual parts and put them into a whole animation that we can export. So to do that and to organize all these animations together, come over to the graph editor panel and in the bottom left you can change the editor type and we want to change it to nonlinear animation. And once you change it to nonlinear animation, you'll have this kind of setup here of all these different things that you can do. Before you do that, you want to select the hands armature, which is going to be near the top, this little stick figure. And you may have some other stuff here. So you can push it down and delete it to get rid of it. And what pushing down does, we're going to start with the draw first. Like pushing down is what this little button here does and it brings it down to its own track what pushing down does so we want to start off with the draw and pushing that down and then we want to lock this track because when we try and push something else down it'll put it into this track if it's unlocked so the next thing we'd want is reload because after the draw we're going to want to do the reload animation so push that down and then with the cursor, line it up to the end of the draw animation. And then with G, we can move it and then line the start of that up with the reload here. And before doing all this stuff, this is when you'd want to go through and make sure you don't have any of those extra keyframes at the start. Because that's when they would start to show up if you pushed it down because there would be space here. That would include the negative because now you have space for it. So just make sure to clear those out before you start putting stuff into the NLA editor. And then the last thing we'd want is the store animation. So lock this so it doesn't get pushed into it. And then push that down. Bring your cursor to the end of the reload animation so you can more easily line it up. Select the store. Press G. Drag it over to the end. There you go. And then to set the actual end of the animation, you can see in the top right here that you have your start and your end. You can increase this to make it longer. You can decrease it to make it shorter. We want to do it at the end of our final animation in the sequence, which is at frame 105. So I'm going to set it to frame 105. So now we have our full sequence of animations all together. You can draw, you can reload, and you have your store. But before we get to exporting, you'll see that if we looked in the rendered view, we haven't added our textures yet. So before we can even add our textures, we need to actually get them from the CSGO game files themselves. So I've added in the description a download to a program called GCFscape, which is the program to let you access the game files of CSGO and then of uh, Valve games and then also a download link to VTF edit which is what you use to open up the GCF scape files you get and then you can save it to a JPEG which we can then import into Blender. So download those and then once you have them downloaded open up GCF scape from here, click the little file button that says open once you hover over it. And then what you're going to want to do is go to your Steam files. So if you have Steam on your desktop, you can right click it and open file location, which will take you to here. You want to go to Steam apps, go to common, and then go to the Counter-Strike Global Offensive folder. Once here, you go into the CSGO folder and then you scroll all the way to the bottom of that folder until you find pack01 underscore dir dot vpk. Click that, you open that up, that will bring you to this kind of panel. So from here, click on the materials folder and open that up. 
And then from there, scroll down and find the models folder within that. There it is, models. Open that up. Now within that folder, scroll down to the bottom till you reach weapons. Once that's open, go into V underscore models. And then from here is where you will find all the all the textures for the things you're looking for. So what we want is the texture for the hands for the P2000. So you can see here the hands folder. We open that up and you have a series of files. And what we want is the .vtf file. So right click that, hit extract, and then export that to where you want it to be. I'm going to make a new folder within, whoops, it's the wrong thing. Make a new folder within where I want it to be. I'm going to call it textures. And then that's where I'm going to export and extract it to. So I have my v underscore hands vtf saved there. And then now I want the texture for the P2000, which is just down here. Once again, I want the .vtf file, not the exponent.vtf, just the regular .vtf. Now once again, right click, extract, I'm going to put in the texture folder I just made. Okay. And then now we can close out GCFscape because we have what we want. And now we can open VTF Edit. Now that we have VTF Edit open, once again, go to Open. And then find where you put your textures, your .vtfs. And I'm going to do the, the hands first. You open up the hands, it'll show you the hands texture. And then from here, go to File, go to Export. And then within your area that you have things saved, you're going to export it as a JPEG. Just change the file type to JPEG and just save it in there. Because that's what we're going to use to import it into Blender. And then now we can open up our P2000 texture. So you can see the P2000 texture. And then we're going to do the same thing where we export it and save it as a JPEG. Once we've saved it as a JPEG, we can close out VTF Edit. And then within Blender, we can apply our textures. So I'm going to start with the P2000. So select all the parts that you want the texture to be applied to. Go to the Material Properties tab, which is this little ball, like kind of checker pattern. I'm going to add a new material. And then you'll see at Base Color, I want to go there. Click the little circle to the left of the color. We'll open up this panel, and then we'll want Image Texture. And once you select Image Texture, it'll give you the option to open up a file. So, and then go to wherever you have your textures that you've saved as JPEGs, and we'll, you'll open it up. So we'll open up our P2000 JPEG. And now it should be applied, and we can check that by going into a rendered view. And for some reason it didn't set it. So we'll just try that again. Oh, it's because it only applied it to one. One of the things. It only applied it to the magazine. So go into this one. We'll do the same thing change it to image texture for base color, open up the texture for it, and then we'll do the same thing for the slide. Add new, change base color to image texture, and then open up your JPEG texture. And then now, yep, now you can see that the texture is applied. And then for the hands, in this panel, go up to the hands armature, click on it, and then within it you'll see Baroque's CSS, and those are the actual hands, and that's what we want to add the texture to. So I've already deleted the textures that were here before, but for you to do it, just click on it and then click this minus afterwards, and I'll delete it and then do that for both of them, and then press new or click this plus button, does the same thing. Once again, go to base color, 
change it to image check texture and then go back to where you have it your texture saved as JPEGs then we're going to open the one for hands so that will apply the hand texture and then as you can see the hand texture is applied to the arms so now we have the gun and the arms textured so now we can go into our output properties and this is a little little printer icon go into those and you want to set your output to where you want it exported so open up the file browser export it to where you want it I'm gonna call it reload no sound and then accept and then you're gonna to want to set your file format to ffmpeg video and then expand the encoding tab and we're gonna change the container type to mpeg4 which will export it as an mp4 the other options here you don't have to worry about audio codec we don't have any audio so don't need to specify that and then go up to the top left the render tab and then click render animation and this will begin rendering your animation as an mp4 and it'll export it to where you specified so I'll come back when it's finished exporting okay the animation just finished rendering so we can close this out and then you can check where you had it exported you can open it up to see if it exported properly so I'm going to restart it so you can see there's the reload and then in the next part I'll show you how to add sound to get that final product